Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of Arkan Geomide. This work was published in JAX by Jack L. Sutro and Lois Firstner. Arkan Geomide was first isolated in 2021 from Arcangium violaceum by Lee and Wu, who discovered it using NMR-based metabolic profiling and genome mining. It has quite an atypical structure and is the first allenic macrolide ever to be discovered and only the second macrocyclic allene to ever be observed in nature. Upon discovery, it was tested for antibacterial, antifungal, anti-cancer, antioxidant and anti-inflammatory activity. However, it did not show any significant biological activity in these assays. Despite this, its highly unusual structure makes it an attractive target for total synthesis. This structure includes a 17-membered macrocyclic ring, which possesses an endocyclic chiral allene. Also embedded in this macrocyclic ring is a tetrahydrofuran moiety containing four contiguous chiral centers. To construct this macrocyclic framework, they would use three key reactions, including a ring-closing alkyne metathesis, a Julia Kochensky olefination, and a Yamaguchi esterification. The chiral allene could be generated from an alkyne rearrangement, while the chirality present in the furan moiety would be derived from the chiral pool. So let's start with the synthesis of this furan moiety. The synthesis starts with the selective protection of a lactone derived from D mannose. 2 methoxypropene is first protonated by PTSA, generating an electrophilic oxonium that is preferentially attacked by the primary hydroxyl group. This then eliminates methanol, generating a new oxonium that then undergoes intramolecular attack to generate the 5 membered ring in an 82% yield. Taking this forward, the hydroxyl group alpha to the ester was selectively triflated using triflic anhydride and pyridine. The resulting compound was then reacted with methanolic HCl. This hydrolyzes the acetal and also opens the lactone ring, forming a methyl ester. The compound then undergoes a 5 exo test cyclization, eliminating the triflate and forms the furan in a 66% yield. In the next step, the hydroxyl groups were protected as TBS groups using TBS triflate and lutidine, and the primary TBS group was then selectively deprotected using tosylic acid and methanol in a 97% yield. This can be achieved as primary silyl groups are more labile than secondary. With this primary hydroxyl group now revealed, it could be oxidized using desmartin periodinine. The oxygen attacks the iodine centre, eliminating an acetate, which then acts as a base to deprotonate the molecule, forming the carbon oxygen bond to complete fragment 1 in a 98% yield. To synthesize fragment 2, propionyl lithium was added to delta valero lactone, opening up the ester to form the acyclic intermediate. The resulting hydroxyl group was then TBS protected with a 79% yield over two steps. Taking this compound forward, it was then subject to an Iori asymmetric transfer hydrogenation. This uses a ruthenium complex with a chiral d pen ligand. This first coordinates to IPA, abstracting two hydrogen atoms and oxidizing it to form acetone. This species then coordinates to the substrate, transferring the two hydrogen atoms to the aldehyde to form the target alcohol in a 99% yield with a 96% EE. With this chiral centre now created, the hydroxyl group was protected as a PMB group and the silyl group was deprotected using TBAF. In the next step, the newly revealed hydroxyl group took part in a Mitsunobu reaction. Triphenylphosphine first attacks dyad and the resulting anion deprotonates mercaptobenzothiazole. The phosphonium intermediate is attacked by the hydroxyl group forming an activated oxygen species, which can then be attacked by the negatively charged sulfur atom, eliminating triphenylphosphine oxide and forming a carbon-sulfur bond. This was then oxidized using ammonium molybdate and hydrogen peroxide to form the target sulfone in an 88% yield over two steps. To synthesize fragment 3, methyl D-lactate was first TBS protected and then the ester was reduced using dibal. This adds a hydride to form an aluminium coordinate tetrahedral intermediate that then eliminates methanol upon workup to form the aldehyde. This aldehyde was then reacted with lithium TMS acetylide. This addition is stereoselective as it is driven by the steric bulk of the TBS group. 
The alcohol formed by this reaction was then protected using TIPS triflate and the TMS group was hydrolyzed using potassium carbonate and methanol. With these protecting groups in place, the alkyne could then be subject to a carboboration reaction. A copper complex formed with the xanthophos ligand and terpetoxide first reacts with bispinacle borane to generate a copper borane species. This adds across the alkyne with the borane adding to the terminal end. This intermediate then reacts with methyl iodide with the methyl group taking the place of the copper to form the product in an 81% yield. The resulting copper iodide species reacts with sodium terpetoxide to eliminate sodium iodide and regenerate the active catalyst. Taking this forward, the borane could be converted to an iodide in a 65% yield using sodium hydroxide and iodine. This iodide was required for a Sonogashira coupling. In this reaction, copper iodide first reacts with propyne, forming a pi complex. This is then deprotonated by diethylamine to form a copper alkyne complex. Meanwhile, the iodide coupling partner undergoes an oxidative addition with the palladium catalyst to form a carbon palladium bond. This can undergo transmetallation with the copper species, leaving the alkyne now bound to the palladium. A reductive elimination produces the product in a 91% yield and regenerates the copper and palladium catalysts. With this alkyne now in place, the TBS group was selectively deprotected using tosylic acid and methanol to form fragment 3 in a 90% yield. So with these fragments now complete, they could enter the end game of the synthesis. This began with a Julia Kochensky olefination between fragments 1 and 2. This starts with the deprotonation of fragment 2 at the position alpha to the sulfone. The resulting anion then attacks the aldehyde of fragment 1, generating an alkoxide that adopts a chair-like conformation by coordination to the lithium cation. The alkoxide then attacks the benzothiazole ring with the negative charge stabilized by the coordination of the nitrogen to the lithium. This negative charge then flows into the sulfone, breaking the carbon-sulfur bond to generate a sulfonate intermediate. This sulfonate can then adopt a conformation where it is antiperiplanar to the benzothiazole ring, and this allows for an elimination reaction to occur, generating the desired alkene in a 75% yield with a 6 to 1 E to Z ratio. Taking this compound forward, the ester was hydrolyzed using potassium hydroxide in isopropanol and THF, and the resulting carboxylic acid then took part in a Yamaguchi esterification. It is first deprotonated by triethylamine, and the carboxylate then attacks trichlorobenzoyl chloride to form a mixed anhydride. This is then attacked by DMAP, and the resulting activated ester is attacked by the alcohol of fragment 3 to form the target ester in a 76% yield. With two alkyne fragments now in place, they could carry out the critical ring closing alkyne metathesis reaction. This was carried out using a molybdenum based canopy catalyst similar to that we saw used in the synthesis of portamine. This catalyst, also developed by the Firstner group, offers a significant improvement over previous alkyne metathesis catalysts as it can be handled in air and stored long term in a desiccator. This is much easier to use than the previous generations of alkyne metathesis catalysts which typically had to be prepared fresh and used within a glove box as they are highly unstable and sensitive to air. This new generation of catalysts reacts in a similar manner to the previous generation. Upon dissolution in toluene, the pyridine ligand dissociates and the active catalyst undergoes a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition with the alkyne. This cycloadduct then undergoes a cycloreversion to generate a molybdenum bound intermediate that can once again undergo a cycloaddition, this time intramolecularly. As before, this four-membered intermediate can undergo a cycloreversion, generating the target alkyne in an 84% yield. With the macrocycle now formed, the silyl groups could be deprotected using TBAF and a 1,5 hydride transfer could then be carried out. This reaction uses a cationic gold catalyst, which is a strong pi acid. This can coordinate to the alkyne, making it more electrophilic, and this promotes a 1,5 hydride transfer from the PMB group. This hydride transfer goes through a six-membered chair-like transition state and forms an intermediate bearing a carbon-gold bond. This then undergoes an elimination reaction, regenerating the catalyst and eliminating PMB aldehyde to form archangiamide in a 58% yield as a single isomer. 
This stereo selectivity is quite remarkable, and the researchers investigated if this was due to the stereochemistry of the PMB group. To this end, they carried out the synthesis using the 11 epi isomer and performed the hydride transfer reaction as before. Surprisingly, this enantiomer also generated archangiomide with the correct stereochemistry. This suggests that the rigidity of the macrocyclic ring drives the production of this isomer, as the opposite stereochemistry at the allene is likely too conformationally constrained. To confirm this hypothesis, they carried out a 1,5-hydride transfer on a chiral but acyclic intermediate. They found that in this case it led to a racemic product. This reaction confirms that it is not the stereochemistry of the PMB group, but the ring conformation that drives the selectivity. So with that finding, we come to the end of the synthesis. Join me in the next video, where we will look at the total synthesis of Dragson's A to C.